Alteza, registration ACX1747, also from north to south. He says the accident occurred when the Dongote truck driver was overtaking improperly the minibus and Toyota Alteza, hence went and hit the, motor, the two motor vehicles. He adds that the driver of the minibus, two juveniles, four female adults and one male adult, total eight, died on the spot. Mr. Hamonga disclosed that the bodies of the deceased are in Kapirin Poshi Hospital Mortuary, whereas two males, seven females, and two babies, a total of 11, are admitted at Kapirin Poshi Hospital. He says all three vehicles were extensively damaged and that the truck driver is still on the run. Government has observed that the Opposition United Party for National Development, UPND, has continued to exhibit worrying behavior that is putting the country's peace at risk ahead of next week's general elections. Local Government and Housing Minister Stephen Kampiongo is concerned that in its desperation for power, the Opposition political party is ready to throw this country into turmoil for as long as their presidential candidate, Hagainde Hijilema, does not win the polls. And Mr. Kampiongo has directed the Local Government Service Commission to quickly act and assure that the lives of the three local officials who were accused of planning to steal UPND's votes in next week's general election elections in Mufumbwe are protected. The local government and housing minister has condemned the recent attack by the UPND president who singled out three council management officials in front of a crowd of his supporters when he held a rally in Mufumbwe. Speaking during a media briefing in Lusaka today, Mr. Kampiongo says that such conduct exposes the UPND leader as a man resolved on stopping at nothing, even if it meant harming the people, perceived to be standing in his way by ascending to power. He says he is aware that Mr. Hijilema in Choma directed his supporters to beat up all those identified to be working against what he termed as desperate attempts to attain power. Mr. Kampiongo explains that while standing before his supporters at a rally in Mufumbwe district, Mr. Hijilema read out the names and positions of the three council officials. He says that what Mr. Hijilema did clearly angered his supporters by the simple act of reading out those names, thereby making the three and their families vulnerable. Mr. Kampiongo has since warned the opposition leader that he will be held accountable if anything happens to those people, stressing that he has no authority to threaten civil servants. The nation will remember the series of violent incidents recorded during the elections in Mufumbwe in 2010 and 2012, where people were killed and several injured in crashes orchestrated by the UPND. We want to warn Mr. Hichilema that we will be, he will certainly be made to account for all his atrocities at an appropriate time. We warn him that he will be held responsible for anything that will happen to those people Mr. Hichilema was mentioning at the public rally. And we want to remind him that he has no authority to threaten civil servants, and he should realize that Zambia did not start with him, neither is it going to end with him. With this kind of behavior, the UPND, we are not surprised that their supporters could go all out viciously, attack the innocent lady who is said to be a teacher in Snazongwe in the southern province just because she's member and therefore perceived to be a patriot front sympathizer. It is further not certain that in their desperation the UPND murdered in cold blood Another car died in Chipurukusu, where another one is fighting for his life in Indoor Central Hospital.
Meanwhile, Mr. Kampiongo has announced the new board of directors for Lusaka Water and Sewerage Company, which will be led by an eminent water and sanitation specialist, Dr. Dennis Mwanza. He says Dr. Mwanza once served as managing director for Lusaka Water and Sewerage Company before he left the country some 10 years ago to work for the World Bank, among other several international organizations. To complete the composition of the board of directors, we have two more members of the board pending the election of mayors and council chairpersons. As you know, this can only be effected after the elections. The two are to represent the shareholders who are local authorities in Lusaka province. In conclusion, let me state that the board of directors has a mammoth task to ensure that Lusaka Water and Storage Company operates optimally and meets the expectations of the shareholders, management, the general members of staff, and various cooperating partners. This is a critical sector, and government through the various water utility companies is expected to provide clean and safe drinking water with adequate sanitation for all our citizens. There are a number of challenges facing the institution which I will be sharing with the new board as I inaugurate them in the next few days. I am, however, comforted by the fact that we have settled for, the, for some of the best brands in the country to manage the affairs of the company the ruling PF has distanced itself from some church organizations collecting money from unsuspecting members of the public in its names with a promise to give them loans. PF Deputy Spokesperson Frank Walia says that such church organizations do not have the blessings from the party nor from President Edgar Lungu himself. Mr. Walia says as far as the ruling PF is concerned, it has only one organization that is empowering marketeers across the country using their associations. It tells QTV News in an interview that besides this organization, which is a presidential initiative, there is no other organization that the ruling PF is using to give marketeers loans. Mr. Walia states that this means that if anyone comes across any people requesting money with the promise to give loans in return, they should know that such people are crooks. He says such people should in fact be reported to the police. We take a break. We'll be back shortly. Hatch your eggs with Pledge Incubators. We stock four automatic incubators with high hatching rate above 90%. Our incubators are of different sizes and hatching capacity at unbelievable prices. For details, call the distributor on 0966 806628 or 0950 Pledge Incubators. Hatch your way. When you think water, think Aquamax. Aquamax, healthy drinking water. A product from Californian Beverages. What wears green? Rides on golden wings at loftier heights than the ninth deck of silver lined clouds, deep in the azure blue of ancient skies. Then returning to its nest, descends gracefully to delicately alight in the din of applause on land where the earliest humans first saw the light of day. An Ethiopian Airlines crew, ever ready, ever proud to serve you. Come, walk with us in the footsteps of the ancestors of humankind. My vote gives me a voice in this election, and it allows me to exercise my freedom of choice. My vote gives me the power to take part in important national decisions. I will exercise my right to vote because I believe that my vote is my right. I am voting on the 11th of August 2016 because my vote is my power.
Exercise your power to vote in this year's election and referendum on the 11th of August 2016. Carry your voter's card and your Green National Registration card to be able to vote. This message is brought to you by the Electoral Commission of Zambia, ECZ. Support peaceful elections. We continue with the news. The Zambia Centre for Interparty Dialogue, ZCID, has encouraged the Electoral Commission of Zambia, ECZ, to ensure that it conducts next week's general elections in a credible manner. The centre says that there is need to ensure that the coming general elections are transparent to avoid post-election conflicts. ZCID Executive Director Horace Chilando says stakeholders should do something to ensure that integrity is maintained and enhanced in the coming elections. Mr. Chilando says if people and political parties lose, it should not be because of the process, but because of the decision by the people through the ballot paper. He notes that it is important that the elections management body is above bold in its operations and the manner in which it manages the elections. Mr. Chilando has also encourage candidates participating in the elections to accept the election results. The ECZ, for instance, should not give reason, should not be the reason why an election should be contested. And also all those stakeholders who can do something to ensure that you know, uh, we maintain and, and, and you know, uh, enhance the integrity of that election should do so. While we expect that definitely there will be people who say, you know, I would have won, but because of this, um, let it be that the process is not really the one to blame for whatever would have happened. The United Party for National Development UPND President, Hagainde Hijilama, says he is at pain to see how the education sector has been broken under the PF administration. In a statement made available to QTV News today, Mr. Hishilema says under the PF government, students are denied meal allowances, pupil to teacher ratios are as high as 1 to 70, university closures are routine and grade 12 pass rates have fallen. Mr. Ejilema assures that the UPND government will invest until every child is in school and that his government will also ensure that children coming from families that cannot afford the fees are able to meet them through the means of bursaries or other financing mechanisms. He believes that this is a critical investment for the nation and that it is also essential for the economy. He notes that if Zambia is to drive the economy forward, then the nation must equip itself with practical skills and business know-how so that they have the tools to succeed. The UPND leader also notes that education is the best weapon Zambia has in the fight against growing inequality and poverty. The opposition People's Party leader, Mike Mulongoti, has disclosed that in an event that there is a rerun after next week's general elections, he is likely to support the political party with high votes. The People's Party leader is currently supporting Forum for Democracy and Development, FDD President Edith Nawakwi. Mr. Mulongoti says it would be unfair for him not to support a preferred candidate, the one the majority Zambians would vote would vote for. He says there is need to interrogate each other if the country is to have a credible president who will run the country and improve the country's economy according to their expectations. And Mr. Mulongoti has noted that there is a lot of corruption going on during this year's campaign. When the people of Zambia will express themselves clearly who their preferred candidate is, it would be wrong not to support that preferred candidate by the people of Zambia. The voice will may be a pointer to who they prefer, right? But if there's a run, the question I ask myself, if the preferred candidate doesn't have capacity, would I be fair to the people of Zambia to throw my weight behind the person who lacks capacity? Whose record is, is atrocious? Whose morality is questionable? Whose integrity is questionable? Would I be right to put my my weight behind such a person. We must interrogate each other. We must continue to ask each other, what have I done for Zambia? Have I been honest in my conduct? Have I conducted myself in a way that comforts people? Look at the way suddenly materials have, have come from all over, expensive materials, throwing them all over. Look, where do you give your cutters is uniform? 
What you throw the general public is corruption. We've seen a lot of corruption going on. You are corrupting people with materials and what have you. Does that make you a great leader? It is your message that people are looking for. Not your chitenge, not your t-shirts, not your drumming all over the streets, giving us sleepless nights. I live in Osaka West. Even at night we're having people passing there making noise, giving us out of discomfort. We'll consider all these things. We take another break. Stay tuned. Hello, you're watching Cube Business. This time around, we are at Oka Deco Office Furniture Store, Oka Trends. Here, you can get the very best of office furniture at very affordable prices. Now, these tables are executive, and I know that's definitely what's best for your office. Now, if you're looking to get yourself into the executive mood anywhere in your house, and I mean anywhere, Oka Deco is definitely the place to be for you. You can get to Oka Deco and get the very best of plumbing material. If you're looking to get yourself a pedestal pun or maybe a tumbler holder, a paper holder, this is definitely the place to be. After a busy day at work, now the best thing that you can get home to is a luxurious bed. And this you can get at Oka Deco. You can get all this at very affordable prices and you will definitely enjoy your rest and be ready for the next day. Ladies love matching things, from matching clothes to matching curtains, but at Oka Deco, you can get matching curtains regardless of what color your home is, because there's a wide variety of curtains regardless of what color your home is. You can get any type of curtain at Oka Deco. Orca Deco, along Kafuyo Road. Oriental Quarries Boxing Promotion in conjunction with Zamtao presents World Boxing Council Gold Championship Bantamweight Bout. The WBC Champion Catherine Piri from Zambia versus the challenger Gibisela Shavalala from South Africa. Supporting bouts Charles Manucci, Oriental Quarries Boxing Promotion Zambia versus Ibrahim Klaas, Tanzania. Alfred Muwowo, Oriental Quarries Boxing Promotion Zambia versus Ibrahim. Akaida, Tanzania, Barbara Banda, Zambia vs. Haji, Gimbo, Tanzania, and many more. Venue, Government Complex. On the 27th of August, from 12 hours, charges, VIP, 300 kwacha, ringside, 100 kwacha, make a debt. Unamwaka Musaji, unakeka pa 11 August 2016. Mapunja wa nsa kupotea po muno Muzambia. Mwanae kuwamba, mwanshira panda majaro. Tomesha muzo ya mjiro, meheya, ni waku mpande kuzeki ya kanso. Kansera. Pakura kuru wako 2016 defendam. Mapunja kusazira po, akati ndeka na kimia kia suyo 6 hours, kukani 18 hours. It is your vote. It is your right. Unoke rusa ruenu wa kusara mwa kebera. Kusara kwenu, ke rusa ruenu. Ingitisha in Zambia enu kusarako mumusaji wa ntandayo nse ono mwaka wa 2016 ni referendum by 11 August 2016 kufuma kimi ya kia 06 hours kufukija by 18 hours. Senda chikachu kia nukia mumusaji apaka ujine chikachu kia manjama tamba pako mambamu kakonche kusarako. Ino mbida ya ya kumji kufuma kipanchi ya Electoral Commission of Zambia. Tundaika hii mumusaji wa mtende. You're still watching the queue news. The Ministry of General Education and Road Transport and Safety Agency have cautioned school authorities to ensure that pupils use appropriate modes of transport as pupils return home when schools on Friday, 5th August 2016. In a joint press statement by Ministry of General Education spokesperson Hilary Chipango and Ratsa Head of Public Relations Frederick Mubanga, school authorities have been urged to ensure that pupils do not use trucks or open vans as such kind of vehicles compromise the safety of the pupils. The Ministry of General Education and Ratsa have observed that trucks are often used for transportation of people in rural areas and this causes a danger to the people carried on such vehicles and therefore compromising road safety. They recall that in 2005, 
44 school children died after a truck carrying more than 100 students overturned in Kawambwa in Lopula province. The two institutions have also cautioned all public service vehicle PSV drivers to observe appropriate speed limits to avoid any road traffic crashes during and after this period. The statement furthermore states that Ratsa will equally be on alert to ensure that PSV drivers do not contravene the traffic laws by overloading and overspeeding. And in another development, the Lusaka Fast Track Court on Traffic Offences this month alone secured a total of 313 convictions out of a total of 390 cases prosecuted for various traffic offences with others appearing for multiple offences. And the Fast Track Court has convicted and charged 19 motorists for driving under the influence of alcohol contrary to Section 157 of the Road Traffic Act No. 11 of 2002. Ratsa Public Relations Manager Mokela Mangolwa says among the leading convictions, 53 cases were for dangerous driving, 82 for expired road tax, 31 unlicensed drivers and 2 for use of handheld device. Mr. Mangolwa says statistics have shown that some of these offences continue to be major contributors to road traffic crashes in the country. Alliance Motors Zambia has donated $4,000 to Community Response to help, in, to help it offer IT services to the public effectively. Speaking during the donation, Alliance Motors Zambia General Manager Andre Bontius says they appreciate the services that Community Response does for the community, citing that not only do they offer emergency services to the public, but also train people to become first aiders. He says the initiative is also a way of giving to giving back to the community for the love and support that they are giving. And it is amazing what they are doing for the community, hence our involvement. Not only do they render emergency services to the public and, and everybody, but they also train people to become first aiders, level one, level two, through to advanced. They turn hundred, no less than 100 students per annum. So we are absolutely humbled and privileged to be involved with this initiative. And, and Community Response Director Stevenson Andrew says they are grateful for the gesture, noting that it will go a long way in offering emergency services to the public. He adds that the emergency team is facing a number of challenges and such donations will help them overcome some of the challenges they are faced with. Mr. Andrew has further assured of his team's commitment to serving more people and teaching more people on how to look after each other in case they're involved in any form of accident. The other accidents at your homes and some of these people that we do teach are your own children. These are school children from grade 12 who come out to the community and want to do medicine but they don't have the right qualifications. But with the little they have and from deep inside them when they really want to do something you all know we will do it if you have an injury. So we teach these children and they go out and help save a lot of people out there in the community. You know that if somebody collapses anyway, what do we do? That's the biggest problem we have. A lot of us decide to run away. But if you have a little bit of knowledge, you'll be able to save life. Shoprite workers at Manda Hill in Lusaka have staged a sit-in protest demanding a salary increment. The protesting workers have vowed not to return to work until management meets their 1,000 kwacha salary increment demand. The workers who were this morning found marooned outside the store premises have warned management that they will not take any promissory note to resume work. This follows the deferring of the negotiations for new conditions of service that were scheduled to take place between June 27th and July 3rd this year, but moved to August the 15th. One of the workers who sought anonymity had told QTV News crew that this delay in concluding the negotiations is what has in fact made the workers run out of patience. When contacted for a comment on telephone, ShopRite Managing Director Charles Botter declined to comment on the matter. Mr. Botter told QTV News that this is given the stage issue has reached. By 10 hours this morning, the main entrance to the store was shut and concealed off by security personnel. We take another break. We'll be back.
Mika Convention Center is an ultra-modern hotel lavishly built on 60,000 square meters. The Convention Center is an ideal place for all kinds of events, weddings, corporate functions, concerts, and conventions. Our 15 conference and meeting rooms are exceptionally equipped with ultra-modern high-tech facilities, Wi-Fi, and an amphitheater with a sitting capacity of 10,000 people. The center also provides you a home away from home in its 80 luxurious rooms furnished with an extra touch of fine elegance and glamour. So visit us at Maker Convention Center along Chonga Road in Lusaka. You can also visit our website at www.makerhotels.com. Hatch your eggs with Bledge Incubators. We stock four automatic incubators with high hatching rate above 90%. Our incubators are of different sizes and hatching capacity at unbelievable prices. For details, call the distributor on 0966-806628 or 0950-610285. Bledge Incubators. Hatch your way. Welcome back. The Examination Council of Zambia ECZ has advised pupils against engaging in examination malpractices, saying this comes with serious consequences. Speaking during an interview with QTV News in Lusaka, ECZ Information Education and Communication Specialist Ronald Tembo says pupils found engaging in exam malpractice risk being suspended from writing exams. Mr. Tembo notes that pupils involving themselves in exam malpractice risk being banned from writing ECZ exams for a period of two years with the council ratifying their, their results. Mr. Tembo says the council is working with various stakeholders to ensure that the issue of examination malpractices is completely done away with. He has since called on pupils writing and those preparing to write the exams to avoid exam malpractices but study hard in order to pass the exams. The most predominant form of examination malpractice is assistance. I think you are aware that those who sit for the GC examinations are those candidates who want to improve their grades. And most of those are working, most of those are mothers, most of those are fathers, most of those are business people. And so they don't usually have time to, to study and prepare for the examinations. So they opt to, to connive with the, the regulators and um, uh, the supervisor of examinations, and those are assisted in the examinations. For the school certificate examination, which is for the internal candidates, in the normal classes, those that are following the prescribed uh, curriculum, uh, for those, I think the most uh, predominant form of examination of practice is the smuggling in of authorized materials. If you look at the guidelines for the examinations and administration of examinations in Zambia, if you if you go into an examination room with a smuggled material, you will be you'll be suspended from that examination. Because uh, even if that smuggled material isn't exactly the same as the question papers. But what which well, the offense that the candidate commits the intent to cheat in the examination, so those are suspended automatically. But I must state that um, uh, we have made the step forward as an institution in terms of reducing the cases of examination of practices. I think right now we are running the GC examinations that uh, which started on 1st July and it's ending on uh, uh, 9th August 2016. I think so far uh, it has been quiet. Of course, there have, there have been some instances where there has been these reported cases of malpractice. And I think so far it has been quiet. And I think we have worked closely with the district education uh, board secretary, the PEOs, uh, and the schools, and also the, the, the district uh, security committees to ensure that we, we eradicate uh, this vice, which is actually denting the image of the quality. The Zambia Youths in the Fight Against Corruption, ZIAFAC, has condemned the move by PF Deputy Secretary General Mumbi Piri to threaten some squatters in Kafiwa district over land. ZIAFAC Acting Executive Director Maurice Malambo tells QTV News in a walk-in interview that the threats by the PF Deputy Secretary General are ill-timed as this is an election year, saying it can put the ruling party in bad light. Mr. Malambo says his organization, on the other hand, does not support illegality in land administration and urges the people squatting on the same land to obtain legal 
documents. Mr. Malambo has counseled Ms. Piri that such matters should be left to the government institutions in charge of land administration as this is not a party matter but rather a government issue. He says land issues are vital and thus the need to be left to relevant authorities to handle all such matters. Government says it is keen on improving the lives and services of citizens, including persons with disabilities. Speaking after the Zambia Information and Communication Technology Authority, Zikta, donated a Braille printer to Zambia Library Cultural and Skills Center in Lusaka today, Ministry of Community Development and Social Welfare Permanent Secretary Dr. Davy Chikamata says government remains committed to improving the living standards of physically challenged persons. Michael Miova has details in this following report. It is often said that disability is not an ability. 15% of the world's population and 80% of them live in developing countries. However, in Zambia, out of 2 million persons with disabilities, the majority of them are neither informal nor informal employment and have limited access to brain materials. In order to help visionary impaired persons in Zambia, the Zambia Information and Communication Technology Authority, ZICTA, an ICT regulatory body responsible for regulating the ICT sector in Zambia, has donated a braille printer to Zambia Library Culture and Skills Center in Lusaka's Chilenja area. The authority is confident that the donation of the 650 SW braille printer worth a 2 million kwacha to the library will help the visually impaired persons to have access to braille materials. In a speech read on his behalf by the Director of Human Resource and Administration, like Mikelawai, Minister of Community Development and Social Welfare Permanent Secretary Dr. David Kamata says government is keen on improving the lives of all citizens, including persons with disabilities. As a ministry, we are pleased with less the handover of this foundation, which is a noble cause towards the necessity of the persons with disabilities act number six of of French law on access to information to persons with a visual impairment. I therefore urge other stakeholders to emulate this great gest gesture by Victor in order to contribute to the well being of persons with disabilities. You all may be aware that this government, under the leadership of His Excellency Mr. Edgar Chagwalu, is keen on improving the lives and services to all citizens, including persons with disabilities. And when handing over the printer to the library, Zikta board a chairman Emmanuel Msonda in a speech read on his behalf by board a member Vestas Chungu says Zikta remains committed to enhancing inclusiveness of ICTs for persons with disabilities. Information and communication technology can provide opportunities and benefits to people with disabilities to overcome exclusion on the basis of visual impairment. Around the world, the momentum is building for initiatives that allow persons with disabilities to take their right place in society and Zambia cannot afford to lag behind. We are aware that Zambia Life by Cultural and Skills Center for the Visual Impaired was established in August 1993, and it is the only organization recognized by the government of the Republic of Zambia <coughs> for being responsible for transcribing materials in Braille on a large scale. Before June 2016, the center only had one outdated Braille, 223, which changed 200 characters per second, thus limiting the rate of production of Braille materials. After receiving the donation, Acting Executive Director at Zambia Library Culture and Skills Center for the Visual Impaired, Kech Sambi, expressed delight at the gesture from Zikta. What a coincidence. They would have not donated this machine at the right time than today because the Minister of Education has requested the library to print 36,000 books for learners in schools for the blind. <laughs> they have also said that the library should print 4,000 teacher's guide books in schools for the blind. <laughs> we need to start an 
assignment from government through Ministry of Education, the younger machine, I'm borrowing the language from America, mm -hmm. the younger machine would have not made it possible, but the one they have brought is moving at a bullet speed. Mm -hmm. And disability activist Elijah Ngwale had also something to say about the donation. Thank all of you for what you have done, for what you have done. It's really very, very great because prayer, prayer has been recognized, as already been said, one, in the constitution of the Republic of Zambia, the new prayer has come here to stay. Two, the, the Persons Disabilities Act. Three, Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. These have come uh, to stay, it's recognized now. But we want decent, we want decent in prayer. And you, the Zambia National Library, must make sure that by next year, please send about three, four blind persons, I'm using the term blind, to train in the library work. Truly, this machine will enable the center to do its work in an efficient manner, and it will enhance access to information by persons with visual impairment, as braille copies will be made quicker. Mayor Michael, QTV News, in Lusaka. The Confederation of Trade Unions of Zambia, KOTU's president, Joe Kamutuma, has expressed delight at the recently signed agreement between the ruling PF and opposition UPND that they will not use government resources during their campaign trail. Mr. Kamutuma has described the agreement between the two political parties as an objective move, also urging political parties to continue preaching peace. He says the PF and UPND should hence continue preaching peace in all their structures before, during and after the August 11th general elections. Mr. Kamutuma says violence must not be condoned because it has the potential to cause sabotage on public infrastructure. These are the, the, the incidences that Zambians are looking forward to, more of those. How can the two major political parties work together in, in streamlining and reducing the tensions that are unnecessary building up and leading to violence? As you know, as Kotus, we have spoken against violence and, I, and the two major political parties have been the victims. So for us, when we see them going to discussing, you know, issues of how they can work together towards this critical period. I think that is the welcome. Uh, as Kotuz, we endorse it, and we want to encourage the Patriotic Front and the UPND that they must think objectively like they've done and continue to think, to thinking in those lines so that the members, the cadres down there, should be able to see that they are leaders at the highest levels are able to interact. But not only that, let them go beyond uh, just that interaction and preach peace everywhere they go. Not where you go on a platform and say, you get this material, go and you give it to a child who urinates and then they mop on the floor. And that is the instigation of violence because it is coming from a high profile leader who, when they speak, the people on the ground, they will take it in the return and do anything. So if, for instance, a leader was to say, when you get this material from another political party, don't use it, keep it. There's nothing wrong with that. You haven't carried any negative connotation. So we are calling upon UPND, we are calling upon PF, please, please continue preaching in the structures of your political parties that this country needs this Peace. We take a recap of the stories making headlines. Eight people have died on the spot in an accident that happened along Ndola Kapirimposhi Road, where while 11 others are admitted at Kapirimposhi Hospital. The ruling PF has distanced itself from some church organizations, collecting money from unsuspecting members of the public in its name. In international news, Five Russians on board a military helicopter were killed when it was shot down by rebels in northern Syria, Russia has said. The MI-8 transporter came down in Idlib province. It was carrying three crew and two officers, Russia's defense ministry said. The helicopter was returning from delivering humanitarian aid to the besieged city of Aleppo, it said. It was not clear which group brought the helicopter down. The BBC has the details. 
A world leading air crash investigator has said he believes flight MH370 was deliberately flown into the sea. Larry Vance told Australian news program 60 Minutes that erosion along the trailing edge of recovered wing parts indicated a controlled landing. The Boeing 777 disappeared while flying to Beijing from Kuala Lumpur with 239 people on board in March 2014. A Nigerian behind thousands of online scams around the world has been arrested in the southern oil city of Port Harcourt. Interpol alleges the 40-year-old man known only as Mike is alleged to, to head a network of 40 individuals behind global scams worth more than $60 million. His operations involve using targeted malware to take over systems, use compromised emails and romance scams. Nigeria's anti-fraud agency was also involved in the arrest. On that note, we end the news for these and more stories. Be sure to log on to our website. My name is Michelle Malunga. Good evening. It is your right.